Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. It's Sam Prentice here. We are on the Michael Badley 3D printed droid page on Facebook. And today we are going to be looking at how to create the ALT droid, which Michael has magically caddied up, ready for us to try and print. You can see it in the background there of Michael while he's struggling to... Uh, uh, oh, there's me, look. Look at that. Hey! Wow, this is really surreal. It's like we're looking back in time or something. It's bizarre. Anyway, Michael Badley's page is on Facebook. It's uh, Badly Printed Droids. I would definitely suggest that you check it out, especially if you're a fan of Star Wars and all that kind of craziness. If you want to build an R2-D2 or anything like that, definitely check out this page if you're into 3D printing and droids. So the big question is, is where do you find the STLs for these prints? Well, Patreon has your answer. And if you look up Mr. Badley or Michael Badley, you should find for as little as $1 a month, all the STLs that you're going to require for this particular build. And again, if you have a look around, you will find some awesome content on there. And this is just me logging in. And everyone now knows my email address. That's going to be interesting. And now I've got to verify this address. This is kind of annoying. Right, hang on a second. Wow, and you're greeted with a picture of Gordon looking very bemused, a little baby chopper. So Michael is pretty famous now for uh, large-scale 3D printed droids, but he's also invested heavily in uh, resin printing, so you can now do a full 3D printed chess set. He also has these little baby droids that he's been working on as well, so if you're looking to cut your teeth on something smaller than a large chopper, as you can see here, then my friends, you are in luck. So head on over to Patreon. Have a look at Michael's page. It's full of frolics. Uh, and again, for a dollar a month, you can't really go wrong. And to be fair, it is incredible value. So Gordon there looking bemused. You can have a little poke around the site. There are a ton of droids. Lots of full-size astromechs. New droid Chopper, which is from the Rebel series. And again, you've got Dio. You've got all the little bits and pieces that uh, R2 came with. And you can basically 3D print whatever you like. Michael is the uh, mystical mind behind this crazy fusion 360 CAD design stuff and uh you know with two just short of two and a half thousand members on his patreon page and ten and a half thousand on his facebook site um you know he's certainly the mover and shaker there you go full size r2d2 uh, dome as well i've printed many of these and uh r5 there as well and again these are single prints so whack it on your printer there's no support needed it's all f wow i don't even know what that is that's a middle leg transfer uh, as I say, it's all 3D printed, and if that's your bag, which it certainly is mine, then Michael's your man, especially for this Star Wars style stuff. So Michael then gives you a link to OneDrive where all the files are easily available straight away. So we're working on the P60ALT2, or Track Droid, or ALT Droid as it's known in the Star Wars franchise, which is a track-driven droid. Uh, and in this case, we're going to 3D print that. Michael's obviously come up with the designs for this, so this is basically all the files that you're going to need in order to make that happen. So let me just bring up the dome. I'm going to warn you now, this type of print is not for the faint of hearted. It is at least six weeks worth of printing. You need to have around a 500 square build volume. So the Creality printer, uh, the CR10S5, is generally the go-to printer for this kind of build. Uh, and again, you're going to want to try and modify that if you're going to be wanting to do this without any failures. This is the track. This is a 3D printed track. Uh, I'm not going to be using this particular one because I've managed to source uh, another track drive system, um, which is not too dissimilar the ones to the ones used in the film. And again, you can see the CAD versions of this and how it all goes together and what it's going to look like in the end if you so choose to. And I believe a chap called Matt has designed the uh, tracks for this. And I know Mike has, uh, you know, had, had this as a working uh, file now. So this is this is great. This is absolutely brilliant. And again, you know, this this is going to be around about a 95% 3D printed uh, droid. Uh, mine is a little bit less than that, but he's, you know, the specs on this are just fantastic. And it, it, all the elements that you're going to need uh, and, you know, what you're going to get yourself involved with with this type of print. Uh, if you want it to move, of course, you might just want it static in the corner of a room, for example. Some people do. Uh, but, you know, the tracks are also 3D printed if you so wish to do that. And, uh, you know, if that's your bag, great. Everything's here. Uh, and again, Michael Badley's Patreon site is uh, is the place to be on that front. OK, so let's move on a little bit and let's look at some of the uh, leg boxes. Now, three of the or four of the biggest prints, there's going to be two of these legs. I don't have the notches on mine. I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to uh, 3D fill them with a 3D pen. Also from GTEC. I'll show you that in a little bit. 
Uh, like I said, I didn't have the notches and, you know, it doesn't really matter. I've got an earlier version of this particular droid, obviously. So, you know, and again, it's a work in progress with this sort of stuff. As soon as things come out, things change. People have got better ideas. You know, it's a good shared community here. So four major files. There's going to be a front. There's going to be a back. And that's a part of the body. This is the back part of the body. And again, <laughs> this is a this is a major um, print uh, for anybody, really, uh, on, on this kind of hobbyist scale. And again, you're looking at three to four days for each of these. The skirt, again, is going to be, um, you know, several several days at the very least. Uh, and this is the type of skirt that I've got. And again, I'm going to have to notch this out in order to get some uh, rods in um, for the uh, for, to mount the body to the uh, to the frame. And again, I'll be using the 3D pen in order to weld the plastics together. And this is the version which I probably should have printed, which is the uh, one with the notches already cut out. And again, you know, if you're looking to start something like this at this stage, you know, it's already um, past the beta trials now. And, um, you know, people have already get, got this out in the, in the working world now. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe you could join them. In fact, while we're in here poking around Michael's Patreon page, let's have a look at this. This is the Chopper um, droid from Rebels, which is one I'm going to be looking to try and do next. And again, single print. And Michael's... You know, just phenomenal at getting this right first time. And even these little notches here, you know, they're, they're done in such a way that the print will just work. Uh, it will print, it will overlap, all that kind of craziness. So, um, you know, this is the, uh, the next droid. And this has a tilt mechanism in the neck. Again, he's come up with that. And, you know, I can't say enough, uh, enough good things about Michael because he's just um, a bloody genius when it comes to all this kind of stuff. But... Uh, like I say, the link is in the description for the uh, Patreon page. I'll um, also stick it here, just at the bottom as well, just in case you want to have a quick look at that now. Um, but obviously continue watching the video before you go off and do that. Right, let's crack on. So a number of the droids that Mike's already come up with are all these different domes. And again, you know, most of these domes can fit on a standard astromech body. So whether or not you're building it via wood or metal or 3D printing it, uh, generally, you can find all this kind of stuff, and there's the body there, and it basically goes. This document's great, actually. It shows exactly what could be printed, and all the droids from Star Wars. You know, Michael's not, um, you know, slow on picking this stuff up, and uh, within a few hours, normally he's managed to CAD something up that kind of looks pretty spot on. Um, and he he does a lot of screen grabs from film and stuff like that, and he's like, again, brilliant. Um, I wish he was my dad, uh, but unfortunately, he's not. And again, you know, we've got the drinks tray for R2-D2, which is from that iconic scene with Jabba the Hutt. He also does a lot with uh, various bits and pieces, decorations. And again, there's his links at the bottom there. So uh, make sure you uh, check that out. Okay, so we are building the track droid. This is going to be the dome. And I'm just going to select that and drop that straight into Cura. Uh, this is the latest version. And again, you don't need any supports. It's already there. And as you can see, it is a ginormous file. It's a massive dome. I think it's 465 mil or there or thereabouts. And when I finally work out what I need to do, I'm going to hit that slice button and see how long this is going to take. And with the powers of video editing, we are at, blimey, look at that, seven days for one single print. And as I say, it's going to take you some time to, uh, to print this. And if you're fully going on into it, again, seven days, uh, I definitely suggest you have some sort of battery backup on the uh, printer and everything is leveled and ready to rock and roll because you don't want to have any failures with this. If you get halfway through the print and, you know, the nozzle blocks or whatever, um, you're just going to be crying yourself to sleep every night and it's an absolute bloody nightmare, to be absolutely frank with you. Now, like I say, I've got a modified CR10S5. Uh, the modifications are Big Tree Tech board and also a Slice Engineering uh, hot end along with a Bontech uh, DDX which um, means I don't tend to get any failures anymore. So um, there we go. So seven days, six weeks on this print. Let's see how quickly we can get this done. Hit that montage.
Good news, everybody. If you are still tuned in and watching this wonderful live stream here, you'll see that the droid is pretty much there. Uh, the majority of the prints came out incredibly well. There were one or two little bits. And even though I did say I didn't get many failures or any failures, uh, I did get a little bit of separation on a few of the parts. But having said that, I'm going to be using the 3D pen basically to weld the plastics together and fix the print. Uh, so you won't get any wastage, which is really the main thing here. And, uh, you know, there's just a couple of little elements that I've just got to print and just pop that on there. And we are away. There you go. Ding. Just like that. So next up, we're going to be spraying this. So I will point out in this next video, I wasn't wearing a mask. And everybody, including Spring, even told me off for not wearing a mask. And I was a very, very naughty boy on that particular occasion. But you should, of course, wear a mask. While using any kind of uh, aerosols and, uh, you know, I've learnt my lesson and I've had a smacky bottom and all the rest of it. So make sure you wear a mask. So my go-to primer is Motep Spray Putty. I use this on the majority of my 3D prints to get a nice smooth surface. All you need to do is apply it a couple of times, sand it, apply it a couple of times, sand it, apply it a couple of times and sand it, as you can see here. If, of course, you don't have a spray putty, the alternative to that is using a body filler. And you can see me doing this right now. This is a process that I like to call buttering up, which is basically where I smear this body filler straight over the print and try and get it as smooth as I possibly can just before sanding. I find that this works really well, but the downside of this, of course, is that you have to sand it even more than you would have done with the filler primer. This, of course, is dependent on how much you put on. Uh, I tend to put more than probably what I should do, but so little layers, this stuff goes off really, really quickly, so you've got to make sure you sort of whack it on and, uh, and get it, allow it to dry. Uh, I've allowed this one to dry overnight. I've used a knife here, and by the way, I am wearing a mask during this sanding process. Yes, you might be surprised. And I'm just putting a little bit more filler primer over the top before tidying up. Now, there are two places on this droid that I was unhappy with. They are here and here. Now, the reason for that is that that part of the top should also connect to the lower part of the body. And I also had a small step on the 3D print uh, on the lower section, which I basically will cover up now using a 3D printing pen. Right then. Well, as you can see, there is a split in the print. That was down to a cold section in the house and I just allowed it to carry on. Now this is a giant arm 3D pen, which is a sister company to GTEC. I'd not used one before, so I asked them if they could send me one. They did. Thank you very much to GTEC once again for supplying me with another 3D printed part. My wife will be ecstatic, I'm sure. So brilliant little pen. Didn't know how it worked. Haven't really seen a lot of these online. It comes in a box with uh, some 3D printing bits, such as PLA filament. Uh, there's two settings on this. It can be ABS or it can be PLA. Uh, I thought this was a charger to start with and I thought there was going to be a little battery inside the unit, but it's not. You have to plug it in in order to make it work. This is a little thing that goes on your finger. I'm never going to use that, so I'm going to chuck it in the box and probably forget all about it. Now, what I will say about this pen, although it is absolutely brilliant, there's three speed settings that uh, don't seem to correlate to anything in particular, but slow, medium and fast. And you plug this in via a normal kind of USB outlet and it charges it up to around about 200 degrees and then you hit the button and it's away to go. I won't be using any of this stuff. This is for children. I'm a man. I'm a grown man doing 3D printing. Right. So let's plug it in and see what we need to do. Here we go. So usually the process for me would be using an epoxy and basically weighing this down to squidge it all together. In this instance, and because I know that the print is actually the correct size and the way that this is kind of split, it sort of was a bit bizarre, but either way, what we're going to be doing here is using hot plastic and we're using the same kind of plastic basically to weld these two parts together, making an extremely strong bond. Now, all I'm going to be doing here is filling this up. Then I'll use a Stanley blade to take the excess off before filling it back up again and taking it off again to make a nice tight bond. I'll then go over the top of this with uh, some filler primer or putty, depending on what needs to be done. And we should not actually see this at all. So in the final product, which hopefully I'll show you, if not in this video, perhaps the next video, I'll show you how, how exactly that went down and how good it actually was. So in closing, we are building a ALT droid, which was original concept designed by a chap called Jake Lunt Davis, who is a concept designer for Lucasfilm then made into a robot reality by the Creatures Department at Pinewood Studios, and was first seen in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, then Solo, a Star Wars story, and several episodes of the Mandalorian series. All while the glorious Michael Badley was cutting this up slowly and surely in the background. So all the parts are now finished and primed. The next thing is going to be deciding actually what colour I'm going to paint it, and also wiring up the electronics. So 
please hit that subscribe button and please hit a like and we will see you next time.